Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be embroidering these Easter tote bags. I think these turned out so cute. I found these tote bags in the Target Bullseye. I think they were three dollars a piece. They come with the ears on the the handles and the cute little bunny face but as you can see I went ahead and embroidered Evie's name on the front as well as this cute little snap tab and I thought this turned out so cute and then they also had this version which I made for Ace and I think his turned out equally cute. So we're going to be designing this in the Chroma software and then we're going to be stitching it on the Recoma EM1010. Super easy, just a simple name. I'm not going to go through the snap tabs, although I will leave a link for these. These are by Crashing Waves, and I thought they were just a cute little addition to hang on there, and the kids can take them off and use them as they please. But super cute, really inexpensive gift, and a fun way to personalize the kids' Easter bags. So I'm really excited about today's video. Let's get started. So here we are in the Chroma software. So I need to get some text. So I'm gonna click on the text tool right here. Shortcut for that is T. And I'm gonna click down on the canvas. This opens up the text menu bar over here in the upper left. In the first box, I'm going to type in what it is I'm looking for or what I'm wanting to type. So I'm gonna type in Evie. And then I have the option of setting some parameters here. But before I do that, I wanna choose my font. So if you click in this box right here, it will bring up all of the fonts that are included in the Chroma software and they're already digitized, they're ready to go. What I like to do often is use a true type font that's on my computer. So you'll click this little TT button that stands for true type font and that will bring up the very first font on your computer, which is a true type font right in this box. So I'm gonna click on that and that opens up this menu. So now I can go in here and choose any font on my computer. So very cool, very easy way to get some other fonts into your embroidery. However, they're not always perfectly digitized. It does the best job that it can to digitize it and quite often it's, it's pretty good, but it's not always perfect. So let's just choose, um, I'm just gonna choose this one. I'm just randomly choosing one. And we're going to click OK. And I don't particularly like that one, so let's try a different one. Let's try uh, this one. Click OK. So that's cute. This isn't the one that I ultimately end up using, but I just wanted to show you how you can use any font on your computer. So I am going with a height of about three inches. If you look at the bag, you have a quite a big area here, but I'm trying to keep it between this seam right here and the eyes. So I went with about three inches tall. So I'm gonna type in 3.00 under height. I'm gonna tab. Uh, space, I'm not gonna change that. I'm not gonna change anything else right here and I'm just going to click apply. And that's our finished embroidery file. Now you can go in here and tweak it and change things if you want. This actually, I'm not in love with this font either. So let, let's actually try, uh, try this one. Okay, that one's kind of cute. So again, my parameters are set, three inches, uh, line spacing, it's at 25%. I don't need to change any of that. I'm just gonna click apply. And now I'm gonna go over here to the second tab. I think it looks like a piece of bread, but it's the fill tab. And I'm gonna change my density to 0.35. Make it look a little denser. And then I'm gonna click this 3D box right here. And that's going to show me what my stitches look like. So here I can make some changes if I want. So I'm not particularly happy with, I don't want this jump in here. I could take that out. You could leave it if you wanted. And I don't know that I like the split. So what I can do from here is again, make some changes. So I am going to right click and choose breakup text. 
Now I can manipulate each letter on its own. So I'm gonna select that V and I'm gonna click on the edit node um, icon right up here, or it's called the shape tool. And while it's selected and the V is selected, I'm gonna right click and put edit and I wanna edit the split line. And so what that's given me is a split line right here and I kind of want to change it more like that. And then I'm gonna right click and that's gonna update it. Let's see what that looks like. I kind of like how that looks a little bit better. You can do whatever you want. Now actually these lines are getting pretty wide. So I think I might just do a fill stitch instead of a satin stitch. I could split this, but I think I'm just going to make it a fill stitch, which is what I ultimately did on the, um, the bags that I stitched out. So let's click off of it and I'm gonna do Command A. And then I'm gonna go over here again to this one that looks like bread and I'm gonna choose smooth and click apply. And now we have a fill stitch. So I wanna see exactly how big this is. It looks to me to be about four inches just by looking at the grid, but you can also just grab this little ruler. It looks like a comb and go from one side to the other. And it's about four inches wide and that looks perfectly fine to me. So one other thing I wanna do is make sure that this name is centered on the hoop. So I'm gonna to go to this very last tab, the transform tool, and under the position X, I'm gonna put zero, and position Y, I'm gonna put zero, click apply, and that's going to move it to the center of the hoop. So all that's left for me to do is save this in the format that I need, and to do that, I'm just gonna go file, save as, I can name it. If you save the RDE file, you'll be able to go back and also edit it should you wanna make any changes. But I will just call this one Evie Easter Bag. And then I need a DST. So I just take out the RDE and put .DST. And I can just, I'll just save that to the desktop. And it's really as simple as that to use a font off of your computer. And I think that one actually turned out really cute. Like I said, this isn't the one I ultimately used, but again, you can use any font you want. You can manipulate them. Sometimes it does a really great job at um, digitizing it. You don't have to make any changes. Sometimes you wanna tweak it. It's really a personal preference. I actually like when the angle lines are not straight across, not horizontal. So I might go in and edit that and change these to more of a angled line like this. And that the angle lines are the yellow lines. And there you can see that just gives it a little bit different of a look. I like the angles to not be horizontally straight, to be sort of at an angle for a fill stitch, but that's a personal preference. You can do it the way you like. So let's get this stitched onto the bag. I'll show you how I hooped it. I've already made Eevees. So let's hoop aces and I'll show you how I set this up. So I'm using my magnetic hoop and I'm just going to open it up. I've got a some 505 temporary adhesive and a piece of tearaway. Uh, actually, this was a cutaway. You can use either one. So I'm going to spray this. And normally I don't spray that on my desktop. And now I'm going to place that inside the bag. Just like so. So that sticky side is facing up. And the area I'm going to be embroidering is completely covered. All right, so this is how I measured. There's a straight line right here, this seam. So that gives me a straight horizon to measure off of. And I went down about two inches from there. So I just used a see-through ruler. I put the ruler right on that stitched line so that I know that it's straight. And then I used an erasable fabric marker. This is a pilot friction pen. This is erases with the heat of an iron. So once I measured down two inches, I made sure it was straight. 
and I just went straight across. And then this bag is about 12 and a half inches wide. So at six and a quarter is my center point. So I just hashed that. So I have a place to center my design and I know that it's straight. You can also measure up from the eyes if that's easier. Just make sure that that's, the ruler is on the same place on both of the eyes and then go from there. I kind of use this as my center because this is actually, this design is actually just about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch off center. So you might want to use that for your center point. All right, so we've got our stabilizer in here and now we need to hoop it. So I'm going to take my magnetic hoop and again, I'm working on my uh, grid. So that's going to help me keep things straight. So I am going to line the magnetic hoop up inside and I'm lining up this edge here with the edge of the bag or the edge of the grid, just making sure that I've got some kind of straight reference point. Once I have that established, I'm just going to take my magnetic hoop. And I find that if, when you're using the magnetic hoops, don't start from up here and go down because then it kind of um, tends to push the fabric down. I like to get it as close as I can before I snap it into place. So I'll do it like that. And now everything is nice and tight in there. I don't have any give or bubbles in my fabric. So again, I'm just kind of looking at it, to see if that looks pretty straight. And it looks pretty straight to me. I'm gonna check my center marks. And I think I'm pretty straight. So we're going to take this over to the Rakoma EM1010 and I'll show you where to go from there. Okay, so here we are at the Rakoma EM1010. I'm going to make sure that when I put this on that the bag is going underneath here. So it's, that's open. And we're going to go ahead and load it. Again, checking underneath to make sure that the bag is under the arm so that we're not stitching the front and the back together, making sure those handles are out and out of the way. All right, so I need to get this centered up right here. So first I've got to pull up my design, make get rid of the Eevee one. So now we need to center it up with that mark that we made. So I'm gonna click on needle number one. I'm gonna hit escape and I'm going to push the frame out. I'm trying to get that needle number one right on that crosshair using my arrow keys. That looks good. So let's lock it up and we're going to trace. And his has plenty of room. I just want to make sure we're not going to hit in the back. So let's do this trace, which is a little more detailed. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to hit in the back. I might need to lower it a little bit. That's really close. So I am, um, I think I would fit, but I'm gonna go ahead and lower it a little bit. I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna hit that back frame. All right, so I'm going to push the frame back just a hair. And that's it. That's how I centered up Eevees. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch out aces. who aren't familiar with the Pilot Friction Pens, I just wanted to show you how easily that line removes. It makes it super easy to mark your embroidery designs and placements. Just the simple heat of an iron, a dry iron, and it will remove the pen mark entirely.
And here's some close-up looks at our finished project. I think these turned out really great. And for $3 in the Target dollar spot, what a fun way to personalize an Easter tote. I love the size of these. I could put a couple of books in there for the kids for Easter, along with some candy and some other fun items. And again, the snap tabs I got from Crashing Waves. I will link that in the description below if you want to run over to her website. She's got a lot of cute embroidery designs. So as always, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. As always, never stop making. See ya. Bye-bye.